kicked in. And without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Frank. Thanks for being here, Frank. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. It's great to meet you guys. So what I first off wanted to start with is, again, thanking Jamie and the crew um, for, again, giving me the chance to show up. It's always great to be able to come uh, see new faces. And again, throughout the universe, it's pretty pretty broad. So I like that there's a lot of new faces. So the always appreciative of being invited into spaces that I don't own to share information. I think that's uh, pretty, um, uh, I value that a lot, being able to meet new people all the time. That's what I'll say. There's a lot of different places where I've given this talk. Um, some of you I know um, are living this talk because there are people on this call who are actually doing what we're talking about. And you you may see me reference them during the course of the, of the session today, just because your questions, I know some of them may have answered or had that problem. So I can also leverage the crowd. So the introduction's already been done as far as me, again, uh, agile, agility, leadership, coach, trainer, facilitator, uh, you name it. Um, been doing this for 10 plus years on what I call the outside, um, as opposed to that's the existence of freestanding agility. Before that, it was on the inside when I was at a company. And we have a lot of a lot of people on the call today. What I want to do is uh, I still think it's important to do introductions. So they're very valuable. Some of the people who are here who know me, what we're about to do. But basically what I want to do is I want to take this time, but I don't want to waste any time. So right now on the count of three, I want everybody to say their name and role as loud as they can. One, two, three, go. Mm -hmm. Mark, Mark, Jeff Colvin, Scrum Master, Manager, Mary Anderson, Anderson the Consultant. Person. There you go. Have you entered and introduced roughly 30 people as fast as that before? I feel really connected to you guys. <laughs> so there, in, introduction's done. It's called the checkbox behavior. And now we know how not to talk over each other in a meeting. So that's just, it's just a lesson in all that. So, um, I, again, if anybody who's joining, if you haven't had the chance to put in, for example, where you are geographically, what the weather is like, where you're at, feel free to slam that into chat. It's always good to have the context, what people are experiencing. Uh, this is part one of part two, of uh, two parts, I should say. Um, this is more in the, the exposing to the information. Part two is going to be, we're going to talk about particular use of something that I'm going to hold up here. Again, it's referred to as a layer champion diagram. There'll be a workshop. It'll be different than this. Part two is not a repeat of part one. Part two is a workshop where we're asked for some volunteers and we'll talk about real situations and teams, have, have the group uh, map out some of the challenges and have everybody else act as consultants to try and help solve for those people. So if you wanna play a consultant, come on to part two. Um, along the way, ask questions. You can put them in chat. You can just advocate verbally. You can raise the Zoom hand. Um, we have people trolling the chat to make sure any questions that come up get answered but along the way is encouraged. We're not waiting to the end for questions. So advocate for yourself. Um, before I get into, uh, again, there are some slides. I think there's a total of 16. And if you subtract the last slide, which is sort of the closing slide and the front slide, you maybe get into the 14 mm -hmm. space. All those will be made available after the fact. So can somebody, um, anybody who wants to try and define self-management? That's what we're talking a little bit about today. What, how would you define self-management? Say so meaning, for example, as it's mentioned in Scrum, teams should self-manage. Who wants to define that? Cue the Jeopardy thing. We got about thirty seconds, right? Thirty <laughs> seconds. Who wants to give it a give it a try? You want to put them empower, empowering teams to direct their work efforts and priorities excellent I like that. Goals. who wants to add who wants to yes and with them uh, uh, they do self they do introspection on their own like continually improve excellent let's go for a third one adding to it not changing what was said before yeah and uh, be able to handle conflicts within the team Right. There's, there's a lot. You can see there's a lot to self-manage. It's an easy statement to say that a team could be self-managing. The, the really, really simple view would just be, say, in their Scrum events. But there's actually a whole ton of other skills that have to be developed. 
And that's a lot of the skills that the scrum master is trying to bring as mastery into the team, decision-making, problem-solving, clarity, disagreeing creatively, all that kind of stuff. There's, to me, there's no one definition, but it's important for us to understand that at least we have a, a, a head around a team that is self-managing. The term used to be self-organizing. It changed to self-managing in the last scrum guide that they don't need to be managed. Generically, is they don't need to be managed on a lot of things. On some things, there's still some management around them. So I'm gonna bring up the, uh, uh, the deck, start going through it. Again, we're talking about um, creating the space on a team for self-management because it doesn't happen spontaneously. And we'll talk about some things today that, that you guys, um, uh, I'll phrase it as there are no villains. Although at times it might feel like it in our job that we have villains that we have to thwart. So let me go over and, and pull this up. And what I want is uh, if I can get a verbal on, yes, we can see the deck, then we'll be good. Yep. Yes, we can see the deck. Pretty cool. Thank you. So again, questions along the way. Um, if you see me like go Wi-Fi down and go in a weird pose or whatever, do a screen capture, send it back to me, send it to Jamie. I love seeing those things. I know some of you have in the companies that you work for have like all sorts of pages with my screenshots and frozen faces on them. So it's, it's a wonderful thing. So ultimately, um, the layered champions is an approach I created to help create the space. We can say for self-management like we're doing today, but I want you to really think of it as self-management is one of the things that it could help with. It really gets into making sure that team health is emphasized. Making the space for self-management is one of the attributes of health that I would want a team, team to be healthy on. So self-management is what we're talking about today. This is something that unless you've worked with me in prior companies, you may have no clue about. This is, it's something that uh, I created and have had in play for several years now. And it comes from all the learnings that I've had where I've been at. So <clears throat> my goal for you guys today is an introduction. We're gonna take Scrum, not change anything in it and add a new behavior on top of it. So there's absolute compatibility here. Just the same way you can take Scrum and add extreme programming. You could take Scrum and add Kanban measures. You can take Scrum and add whatever you want to it. It's the same thing. So we're taking Scrum and we're adding something called Layered Champions to it. And again, the concept here is today, how do we make sure that we can enable self-management to exist and to last? So in general, we know that self-management is hard. It may be hard to create from scratch. It may be hard to make it stay. There could be all sorts of changes that teams have to go through what's in their backlog, who's on their team, all sorts of reasons why it might fall apart or not anchor in the first place. Does anybody have an experience that they want to share today that self-management either couldn't get a start because or was impacted because? We don't have to mention names and companies, but I know out there self-management is something that is often a struggle to get up and running. Who's got a story they want to share? I'll share. Um, hey, my name is Mike, um, and uh, I was working. Uh, I I joined a local meetup for tech and development. Uh, I'm not. A, I'm but I'm not a developer. Uh, and I met a guy that um, knew someone that worked for an, an, an enterprise corporation. Um, he kind of had a, a, a skunk works project to create his own small team of developer, developers to do a website migration. Um, and I don't think he was using Scrum or any sort of agile practices at the time. It took them six months to migrate two websites. Um, and then after I mentioned that of my experience with Scrum and agile, um, he contracted me to help be the liaison between the, the client and the developers and himself. And within the next six months, we were able to migrate and, uh, migrate and, and transfer content across 15 different international sites. So um, the team was having trouble self-managing and getting to that agile mentality of um, where to start, how to do things more efficiently. 
um, that kind of that kind of thing without sharing too much information. <laughs> sure, perfect. And again, so when I say the word impacted, it could be impacted for the better or it could be impacted for the worse, right? It was impacted. Influence could have been another word that I used. Who's got another example of, of again, experience they've had where self-management was impacted? So it looks like Dragan, your, your hand is up. Uh, uh, yeah, just a brief, uh, just remembered a, a few months back, uh, we had a really, really tight deadline and uh, I was I was simply pushed into delivery and delivering on the, on, on the goals where I simply needed to uh, jump into problem solving uh, and uh, basically not be able to to stand back and let the team try possibly fail learn improve move on move on and uh, uh, improve from that so having a, a, a having a long enough timeline where you would uh, basically let the team go through the process and go through the, the through the through the paces of, of, of building that self-organization muscle because in my opinion, it's 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 really a muscle that you have to work at. Uh, yeah, it's a, a limiting limiting time is is definitely negatively impacts self organization. Actually, that's a great point. And oftentimes, right, the pressure of a date will force us into having to get the work done and having to get the project done, and not being able to build a system that gets the work done or the projects done more efficiently and more effectively. It just crushes it down. Same thing is true if you have a team that's not using Scrum and you have a relatively short project, product, whatever it is, you may not reap the benefits of it because it takes time to go through those curves. So it, Scrum could extend by accident if things are too close. So it sometimes becomes a win problem. But it's uh, it absolutely it absolutely makes a difference. Who's got a, who's got another comment? So Nick had one in the chat. Technical background product owners can sometimes be overbearing with teams. Yep because they know the solution, they know all this stuff, they know the domain, almost the whole tech lead disease or whatever you want to call it that gets in there. Um, people who've been in a role on the team and then promoted into a role such as a manager, bring the solving engine that they had with them and they when they still sort of feed in both places kind of space. So these are great stories, again, saying that um, self-management may be impacted, right? And so we have to find, uh, with constraints, we have to find alternate solutions, or like I said, it becomes a win. Suspend it, but go back to it. So there are a lot of ways that it can be impacted. It's actually kind of fragile. An addition of a new team member could happen. A loss of a team member could happen. Um, changing something in a, in a team's backlog could cause it to thrash. Ultimately, if we look at self-management, things go better when the teams could be robbed of that experiments and not even know it because they've knit, they don't understand what it should be. They don't have anybody around with those champions. The organization might be squeezing it out. That some have just have no clue what it likes to be led. Again, them being led to be self-management. Cool. So the layer champions that we're gonna talk about today, I wanna to give, here's three good reasons. And you can, you could read these as just for the sake of self-management, but this is true for a lot of things. Again, one, Self-management is not guaranteed. You just train the scrum team, get them up and running, and probably about by the end of the sprint, self-management shows up. Not true. It just doesn't show up inherently on its own, right? Even if the team or team members have worked in various teams together and you pull them together, it still may not show up on its own. Over time, it may not stay in play. Had it, lost it. Had it, Scrum Master swap, Scrum Master change, lost it. They may go like, oh, wow, we're the only ones keeping the hot air in the balloon. That's interesting. So Scrum doesn't provide any guidance around self-management. In fact, if you look, it says, you know, nobody can tell the team what to do. It talks about self-management, but it doesn't declare stakeholder role really clearly in the manager role. It's really an inside view here. And those are key influences influencers into the idea of how the team manages and i'll tell you if the scrum master is the only one championing anything nothing goes anywhere right a team and the only champion is even the team doesn't want to play but the scrum master is trying not to be a scrum monster and right not to be just the scrum moster but just somebody to really be master and you can find that it can be tough to be that one person i remember it used to be the phrase and i don't hear it anymore which is good actually 
the scrum master is the blocker for the team. It's like, hmm, I prefer change agent. I prefer educator, trainer, obstacle remover. But I get it that there is often that protecting from the outside influences, but they can't do it alone. And this is what I know. I also know you can't do it alone, meaning we just need more scrum masters. It's not an us versus them situation. So three key reasons why what I, the behavior that I'm talking about with layer champions is needed. Because if it's just scrum masters versus, this isn't gonna go very far. So you guys are probably familiar with this. Most of you anyways, again, the, the basic scrum framework, right? Left to right, basic out of scrum.org. You got the product goal coming down in, works into the machine and everything happens, it's wonderful. Um, as of late, I've started explaining this for some teams as an architectural diagram, and they get it more. On the left is the database that queues up all the requests. They come down in, the sequencer pulls the most important quest to the top based on the sort. But then the processor runs and does the calculation, ships that information overnight, and the logging and monitoring is looked at to go back and improve the system. Some people understand this better when you think of it as an architecture or a system it has to have certain pieces that are connected to do. Is someone getting a screen grab? Yeah. Frank will be back, he's frozen. Okay. Hopefully. I think you need a better screenshot. I don't think I want to make funny faces right now. Anybody want to want to PowerPoint jam this one? Freestyle it. Let's see. <laughs> Come on back, Frank. Oh, I think he's he's gonna join back. Anybody have a good dad joke? I have awkward silence here. Or a mom joke, mom joke. Or a mom joke, yeah. That, that was my dad joke, by the way. They, they're that bad. <laughs> uh, I wish right. I were better at them. I have a team member who's really good, and I lean on her, and I I try to remember them, and I forget always. <laughs> Looks like Frank's uh, how many hey, How Frank. many software? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was Frank's say, back. <laughs> I'm back now, right? So this is what happens when we get the, the, adver the ad based version of Zoom, I guess, right? Every once in a while, I get to stop for 30 minutes, watch an ad, then I can come back to the meeting. Not true. I'm just saying. You got the red <laughs> white, the Wi Fi light of death. So bear with me. <laughs> yeah. If you want to share your screen again, I will. Thank you. I go back here. We're going awesome. to share and we're going to go back to here and back up. All right. Are we back? We're back. Yes. Cool. So again, just a little tip, but as we go through, I will often explain the diagram from different perspectives so that it connects with how they understand the world as I just post the agile view. So this is the basic, the basic framework. We're not going to go into educate on this, but we're going to reference how layer champion fits into this. So when we look at this diagram, the question I have to you guys, and I want to hear from is what roles around the team could impact self-management? We heard some earlier, but I want to hear from you guys. What roles could impact it? HR. HR, good one. That's a big, big bucket. I mean, there's like, yeah, anyways. Project management. Project management. Excellent. Keep going. Let's hear three or four more. Finance. Pretty much everybody in the company. Hey, I love that. So I love that. So it's a cloud, right? There's pretty much everybody in the company without knowing could accidentally break things or influence things. So there's, there's a key, there's a cloud of people that even with good intentions for what the business is trying to accomplish, good intentions for what's on the value stream could create or make decisions around the team that put it in jeopardy. This could be true for self-management or any aspect of health for the team. We're just going to take that lead developer off of your team and move them over here because priorities changes. Thank you very much. Keep going. Like these things impact the team. Again, they're not villains they may not understand it. However, layered champions 
what you'll find is tends to create more champions around the team who are aware. And when there are changes that are proposed or in place, they come to the aid of the value stream or the team or self-management and talk about the potential consequences of doing this. So more champions. Notice I say that's not necessarily just more scrum masters. So there are, these are people that are just trying to do their job under pressure demands, this and that with the understanding they have. They may or may not be five out of five in the agile mindset. They're not villains, but in the wake of some of their behaviors, we could be impacted, teams could be impacted. So on top of this, now we're gonna say, cool, let's, let's add layer champions. Again, not to be that blocker, not to be that defensive one, but to be a collective group of what I'm going to call advocates for things like self-management in general health and improvement of the teams. Remember scrum masters I'm saying is not the only person. The phrase that I use is there are others in the organization who are obligated to be champions, whether they know it or not. That's what I'm saying is I tell people there are certain roles. They're obligated to be champions for the health of the team. They historically may not have may not have been that. So layer champions is a team that's added to scrum. Its goal is championing health items like self management. Improvements continuous improvement. Again, it's created from three perspectives. The concept of I'll even tell the story. And, and, and those of you who work with Jamie, Jamie may not know this story, but those of you who work with Jamie, some of you have the context for this story. <laughs> Initially, uh, layer champions, uh, I used to refer to it as a triad, right? Three perspectives. However, the number of people that it takes to represent for a team the product perspective, the process perspective, and the people perspective could vary but it's always been three perspectives, product, process, and people. So when it was originally called triads, people would say, oh, we have a fourth person, it's a quad. It's a hexa, septa, whatever. Like, this is not about the number of people. This is having the right perspectives. And there are only three that I want to be um, intersecting. I don't care the number of people that have to represent the perspectives, it's three perspectives the product perspective, the process perspective, and the people perspective at the team level. We're not talking head of, head of HR, we're not talking head of product, but at the team level. So there's three key perspectives that need to behave as a team in champion health. So far, so good? Any, any questions coming in yet? Okay. This team, this layered champions team, includes leaders that are already accountable for health and improving in their respective areas at the team level. So product process people becomes product owner, scrum master, the functional managers for the developers. This is when everybody goes, eeks, managers, watch out. What's he doing? They're gonna manage the team. Hold on, they're obligated to champion whether they are aware enough to know that yet or not. They need to be partnered with, not pushed away. Scrum doesn't mention them. Yet there's always this us versus them. And one of the frequent trouble spots in terms of self-management can be manager behaviors. They're not a villain, but a scrum shift could leave them, is my role needed? It could leave them confused. It could lead them for not having visibility into things they used to have visibility. Somebody else is prioritizing now. I'm not in these meetings, yet I'm on the hook for the talent, skills, and abilities of the ingredients in this cake. They can feel left out. That can create weird behaviors. So the team are basically the product owner, person, scrum master, person, and the functional managers for the devs. Remember the devs, scrum says product owner, scrum master, dev. Used to be dev team, but we call it dev. Just to be clear, I call it there's product owner, scrum master, and I might say product developers. So dev we know isn't just developers. In theory, it's a cross-functional team, but scrum still calling them developers. So 
the product owner is a leader, in my view, at the team level. Scrum Master is a leader at the team level. There's other aspects of the role where they can be leaders above the team, but absolutely at the, at the team level. And the, the functional managers are leaders of talent, skills, and abilities in organizations for the members of the dev team. So if you have a team, for example, that has a product owner and it has a scrum master and it has a single manager for all the developers, right? Then you would have three people representing the three perspectives. If you had product owner scrum master and you had a dev manager, a QA manager, a UX manager and a BA manager, because you had a UX person, a BA, specialist, right? Then you might have six people in the layer champion team. Every member of that dev team needs to have representation from the health and championing and self-management space, not be managed, but representation. So the partnering of the managers with the product owner, with the scrum master to be on the hook for championing the health of the team. I'll say it at the end, but I'll say it again not to manage the team, to make sure that they create the space so this team can thrive. There has to be a partnership around this. Any questions on that? In the part two workshop, we'll take some examples of teams that you guys offer up and we'll show, show me the invisible lines of influence is what I'll say. And I'll ask about reporting structures in maturity five out of five in, their, in the agile brains. And we'll map out because there can be some really weird things about, well, the product owner is also the manager and the scrum master and the CEO is the manager and the scrum master and is on the team. When we map out those lines of influence, we can see things that we can go solve because they may threaten self-management. So here is the concept of that central team, the scrum team plus layer champions. I'll tell you about their behaviors in a second. What you'll notice here is the developers on the team, we're inviting the managers, the talent skills, the people aspects to come close to the team. We're also inviting the scrum master on the team to come out and the product owner to come out and play in that outer layer. So I want you to think concentric circles. So there is what Scrum used to say, the development team, great. Development team has a challenge and they can solve it themselves. They can manage it themselves, fantastic. Their first line of asking for help if they couldn't would be, if you think of it as a planet, planet dev with two moons, product owner and scrum master are in sync around that. If we can't figure it out, we have two people on our team who could help figure that out. They are local champions. Now it is possible that the product owner, we do or don't have one, scrum master, we do or we don't have one, but we're gonna stick with the concept of we do. But that product owner scrum master relationship isn't always harmonious. Don't understand your role. They may also be a threat to the, like I'm telling the team what to pull versus we're championing the team pulling. So those orbits of those champions may be off. If we have the orbits of two moons for a planet off, it's only a matter of time before problems show up. So devs, two champions right there, product owner and scrum master, let's assume they're five out of five agile mindedness trying to make this work. Developer team says, we need help. They reach out because they're right there with them on the team they solve the problem. If that team can't solve the problem, where do they go as a team for help? Without layered champions, who knows? Escalates up some path to head of product, goes up to head of technology, goes over all over the place, goes nowhere. There may not be a place to advocate for. We may have team members who go to their manager to talk about stuff, but now that manager and the other manager and the scrum master and the product owner are not aligned on the existence of a problem and are aligned on solving it together. So what I help create is in this layer champion space is there are obligated people around the team and on the team obligated to work together to solve obstacles that inner layers cannot. We can't, we can't, we can't. 
They do not come crashing in. They check to see if the team's aware of the problem because we could ask the product owner or scrum master. And if they are and they're on it, we say, great, that's good to know. If they are not, do you need any help? That's an option. There's also a series of what I would call um, a cadence and trigger for interacting that we would have these people meeting on a regular basis to see how things are going. So we've got team, we've got dev, we've got scrum master and product or in orbit around the team, the layer champions, managers coming close, partnering with scrum master and product owner to solve for things related to help. For example, self-management is in jeopardy. Then we talk about it. Obligated champions, even though some of these people could be the people challenging self-management. It's a wonderful place to be when you can actually have that conversation with the people who are trying to partner and play. Product owner scrum master relations may not be exactly tight partnership. We may also find that's true between the managers, manager scrum master, manager product owner. This draws it to where it should be to have that conversation. If we can't work as a team around the team, how can we expect the team to become high performing? So it calls these potential not champions into be champions. If this layer couldn't solve, we could go out further. So you could think of it as an escalation path, but it's an escalation to a team, not just hierarchy. Dev can't solve, product owner, scrum, product scrum master, and the team can't solve. We go to this layer champion level. If we couldn't solve it here, we can ask for help. Who the team around this would be the, who are the manager's managers, the scrum master's manager, and the product owner's manager. We go out to the next layer. That layer should also be designed and set up as a team that's solving, not as a single point of escalation. There should be layers that want the inner layers to solve. Have you guys, have you brought this to the layer champion meeting yet? No, we have not. Then please do that. Please take it down. Have you talked to your scrum master about it? We have not. Please talk to your scrum master. They need to give it the hand because we want to know that the inner layers can solve and only reach for help when they can't. We don't have to escalate up a path of just a technology path up to some technology leader to try and solve it for us. That's dangerous. We want the layers to solve and the layers to communicate. So there are other layers at the far outer rim. You have a satellite called Frank or a coach who can be pulled into any part of the system that's not working. Devs throw a, the, the term, uh, those who work with me for a Frank card, a coach card. I can be invited into a team meeting. I could be invited in to conversations with the scrum master and or product owner with just the devs into layer champion because there's something they're having trouble solving or they're trying to start this process up. So with the layers, there can be coaches out there. And the coaches may work in different orbits around the team. So a scrum team, again, the champions around the team, how many depends on how many functional managers you have or the people but it is a team around the team. Any, any questions on that so far? Anybody scared to death about letting managers get close to a team? Well, Frank, I, I'm, I'm curious, so I'm thinking of this in the context of some of the things that we that were brought up at the beginning of the call around you know, things that impeded self-management and the example of deadlines mm -hmm. that you know, squashed the space in uh, this, I, I, I guess I'm seeing a connection that this could help that, you know, talk, talking about how to support the team. Are we, are, is there some leeway where we could push the date out, which would give them that space to still um, experiment? Is there a way for us, if we can't, that we can all have the same message to communicate to the team about the con, you know, these consequences or, you know, help them better understand so Correct. that they're not feeling so fresh, pressed. When pressure. there's more, when there's more champions in orbit, then there's more sensors in orbit. And there's more likely that somebody would hear something being talked about coming along the way. And we have a chance to meet it early, as opposed to we're not listening at anything, at anything. So the managers are often more informed than the developers, more informed than the product owner, more informed than the scrum master. So it creates that listening post. 
that we're obligated to try and solve. Wouldn't it be wonder, wonderful if you're working in an organization where the managers say, hold on, hold on, this would completely thrash the team in the due date and coming out and do we really want to do that? You're jeopardizing here. I've seen teams do that. I've seen managers do that, especially when they're called in to behave like this. Other than that, they just think, well, my people will just have to adjust. So it's that obligate champion to listen and solve together. It doesn't happen in certain places. It doesn't happen easily, and it doesn't happen by default. So let's go a little further. Why a team? We talked about this a little bit. These are people who are already champions. They are, however, not working together to compound what they champion. By aligning their focus for product, process, and people together, they make a safer whole. Instead of just being successful in their vertical, my side of the boat's not sinking, they are obligated to make sure the value stream is healthy, the team is healthy on it, the dates, the deliverables, the priorities, the roadmap. That's what I believe they need to be accountable for. They are making sure that system is in play even under the weight of really serious changes in an organization. We have to understand what we're buying. Scrum Master can't do it alone if we're really trying to play this game. So I believe it's a team behavior, a team around the team that takes these individual roles and brings them into a solving layer around the team that doesn't crash in and tell the team what to do, but certainly is making sure that things are healthy, checking in, and there's representation from the team Product owner, Scrum Master, right there. Frank, we have a question in the chat. Sure. Uh, it's from Manu. I understand the outcome of uh, Larry is to make the team self managing, but doesn't the process of achieving it by adding layers contradict that hierarchy in Agile? So the idea is it doesn't. So they're not changing the priorities. They're simply communicating. You'll see in the series of questions when we meet what they are allowed to talk about and what they're not allowed to talk about. So I want you to think it is, if we can't solve, we can escalate to another solving layer, not to hierarchy in the organization. These are people that need to be connected to how work gets done, the network of work getting done, as opposed to the hierarchy needed to run the business. They historically have been in the hierarchy. I manage people, they are my team. No, they report to you now, talent, skills, and abilities, product owner prioritizes, scrum masters in charge of team effectiveness. You're, you're supplying me the talent we need to make this product sing. So they are enabling the ingredients. So it is a shift, but the shift is there is an escalation to a solving layer, which involves product plus technology plus whoever to come in together, as opposed to going up an individual silo. So the concept is the we let the lower layers self-manage and solve if possible. If not, they ask for help from the next layer who can help solve and help them improve how they solve on their own. So each layer has an obligation to make the inner layer work better. I think it's important too to, to remember this, the, the concept of layered champions is, is, is making sure that you have that regular touch point with that layered champion, not just having the layered champion framework set up, but making sure that you don't have to have something to escalate just to get together. Like having that regular, um, right regular cadence. touch point cadence of right. meetings where you're coming together uh on a weekly basis um and and, this, and and talking through team health talking through you know right. process and people and 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 keeping sort of your thumb on the pulse of the team correct it, especially it if it's important. and I'll, I'll go forward if you look at this if there's a brand so basically it takes a team to raise a team you would have a layered champion team in place before you had a team and their job is to help build out that team, get their breaks to hire, get that figured out. When it's up and running, they're meeting frequently to make sure that team is a good space. After a while, they settle down to what I call a regular heartbeat. Here you go. How often should these people meet? My suggestion is there should be a cadence behavior and a triggered behavior. Cadence, two to four weeks, that team gets to decide how often it wants to meet. Product owner, scrum master, and the functional manager or managers are meeting and saying, how often do we need to meet? And what conditions would cause us to meet sooner? Product owner just left the company. Boom, we meet sooner. Value streams in jeopardy. We're going to onboard some new team members. We should meet sooner. There's some disagreements around practices at the team level. There's some tool shifting going on. 
So there's cadence behaviors when things are going smoothly. They may be shorter when the team is newer, but eventually they settle. And there's a trigger, what would trigger? So it's important for teams, layered champion teams to have a trigger list. What is what I call that fire alarm that would cause us to get together before our next cadence? Again, here's the examples. Priorities are changing, teams are collapsing. They're, not, they're always in control of the teams. The org might be collapsing and changing teams on them that may wanna get them together. Sustainable pace is coming up. We have a challenge, could be a performance challenge, could be talent skills or abilities. We have a need for this skill set. Our backlog just pivoted and gave us a learning curve. Do we have the learning curve or can we do some skill development here? So those are triggered behaviors. Cadence is you should meet at a regular cadence, determined by how frequently the layered champion wants to meet. It's a self-managing team itself. So cadence and trigger. Here, how do we get started? Basically the concept is if you wanted to do something like this, you need to make sure the product owner and scrum master partnership is solid first. Cause that's in right around the team every day, every time. So product owner, scrum master partnership, check it, checking on it, bring up this concept. You can bring up the deck. You can say, you know what? I wanna help build a solving layer around this. And you and I, um, we need to be partnered on this. For example, Jamie, I know that Jamie, Ann, and Jeff, you guys work in the same company. Is the product owner scrum master partnership always solid on the teams that you're on? No. Um, no, but we keep working on it where it's not. Correct. So I have helped layer champion teams where that product owner partnership is not. The layer champion, somebody on there throws a Frank card, a coach card, and we go in to try and work to solve that. So, but it starts there. You can't get the triangle without having one dot who wants to do something, usually scrum master, trying to work with the second dot, which is right there on your team product owner, trying to create the third dot, which is the people piece. But you've got to work on product owner and scrum master partnership. We're in this together. What's our biggest obstacle? What's our top priority? What do you think we should do? You got to have that improvement working. Then you say, great. Now we could actually hold it. Do you agree we should invite them? Here's the reason for champions. Let's invite and educate those managers in about what we want to set up. They'll think it's crazy. They won't understand some of them. Other thems are actually very agile minded and are relishing the chance to be able to help the team be successful. They should be given what I call starter questions. It's a new behavior. We need to keep that group of people away from status, away from the work. Just like the retrospective is not about the work, but about how we work, this team doesn't talk about the solutioning. This team doesn't talk about the tickets and the work. It talks about how we work. So with the cadence and triggered behaviors, there needs to come a way to reach each other. Teams channel, this channel, whatever. The bat signal, how do we, hey, this just came up today. How do we reach out to the layer champion? It's up for that team to figure out how they want to do that. There may be a backlog or list or channel that they use because they're having conversations and they probably have actions or to do's that they're working on together to help a team get stronger. So here's an example of some starter questions. These are what I say is teams will eventually learn the right questions to ask. Just like the scrum guide says, are you on track with your goal? Whatever questions you ask that help determine that are great. If you don't know, here's some starter ones. The old questions are now the starter questions. Again, are there anything changing in our backlog, team members, skill sets? If we talk about this stuff, we're talking about how we work. This keeps away. Now, over time, your questions get better. Jamie, do you find that to be true? We're nowhere near the starter questions now. We're asking other questions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but we have to start and stay away from the work. I see one question. Let me go one more slide. So scrum and layered champions. This is it on top of, remember I said nothing changes in scrum. It just sits on top of. It's a capability, a team, a solving layer that you could put around. It could have solving layers out. You can educate out in the organization. What I know is uh, today we have the benefit with Jamie and Jeff that are working inside a company where this is rolled out across five business lines, four or five business lines, all teams, pretty close. And it rolled out and it's a natural fit and it's working. Now is it's working because we're now solving for problems we couldn't see before. 
Is it smooth everywhere? Nope. Team, this is a team that also has to go through the Tuckman model, forming, storming, norming. We're not used to this behavior, but this is what it looks like. Scrum without that is fine. This on top of it solves for some of the, how do we get more champions in the org? Key points before we wrap up and then I'll go to your question, Mike. So doesn't change anything in Scrum. That has to be true. If we start changing Scrum to make something else work, we have a problem. It doesn't change it. The team does not manage. We don't manage the team. We listen to the team, we help the team. We may have to bring organizational changes into the team coming from the outside. There may be asked for help from the inside, but it's continuous improvement always. And the layer, so would layer champions be in the team's retro? Well, the product owner scrub master would be because it's the team's retro. Would the manager be? Nope. No need for it. If the team needed the help, they could add them in. But it's not a default setting. This does not mean that managers get into the retrospective. It means we help solve anything that comes out as an ask for help. Last one, I mentioned it earlier, and I'll say it again. Layered champion teams, great, let's start this, let's get the question. They'll struggle, they'll stumble, they'll get it wrong. Forming, storming, norming, performing. It needs to be coached to be done right. And when it is, it propagates and it works. Flawless? No. More obligated champions in play? Yes. The growth of agile mindsets? Yes. Partners for Scrum Masters? Yes. So let me jump out of my share. Mike, what do you got? Thanks, Frank. Um, was just curious about like a, a, a working agreement and how often that should be evolved with the team or if you advocate for working agreements. Um, yeah, so I, so I do. I like to have working agreements. I have a very subtle name change though. I call them teamwork agreements. Working agreements sound very contractual and it's just like a forced relationship. I want us to agree to have teamwork. So I like teamwork agreements. And I think layer champions should have teamwork agreements. Yes. Got it. So the layer champions is the, the obligated managers, the mentoring, the, the uh, leadership, really helping kind of checking in separately to say almost like a health check on. on of, of the, I think it is the developers report to somebody. It's just those people. It's not all the hierarchy above. It's not right. the people you invite to a sprint review. No, nope. okay. it's just the next level managers pulled in with representation from the team to talk about, is there anything we need to solve that you guys can't? This constant, um, it's like, um, it's almost like every sprint or every other sprint, like I said, uh, the, the two to four weeks to kind of adjust and, and optimize as you continue going. Correct. Um, and, and when things settle down and don't change often, the cadence may span out, but it never disbands because yeah. You're going to get changes in priorities, team, process, people much quicker. Just naturally, you should. Nothing really settles down to a static pattern with Scrum teams. So here's what I want to do. We've got 30-some people on the call. I have five fingers in the air. In order for us to leave this meeting, you're not allowed to leave this meeting until all my fingers are down. Each one of these fingers goes down when somebody gives me an aha or a takeaway or something that they liked about today's session. I need... It cannot be the same person five times. Who's got a takeaway? Well, I, I certainly like the layered champion uh, model in terms of a way to try to break deadlocks and to provide a broader perspective into the decision making of the team. Excellent, fantastic. Champions of self management helping break that. There's one. We got four ahas, takeaways that you had today. I wanna to hear from somebody else. So I'll share the, um, the concept, what one of the things said at the beginning about self-managing, the, the creating the space for the team to figure things out. And I see this layered champion um, as a place to create alignment and awareness of things that te the teams need to figure out. So it's not just the scrum master supporting that space, but also the PO, 
um, who might be able to create space in the backlog for this and the manager of the team's awareness. So it's alignment to give the team space to, to, to fix their own problems. Fantastic. Empowerment's in there. Absolutely. So we've got three. Who's got another takeaway or an aha from today? I like the idea of the team working agreement because I think it's really different than the working agreement. I like and I will try to implement it. So It's very subtle, right? Similar words, just change. It's teamwork. Emphasize yeah, it's... the teamwork and collaboration. We agree to have teamwork. That's an agreement that anybody without a scrum team could use. Teamwork agreement. Show up on time. It's the same agreements, but it's teamwork is the emphasis. Fantastic. All right. Who's got one? We can't leave the meeting. Who's going to hit the home run and get us out of here? Somebody's going to be late for a meeting. Who's got so an aha? Uh -huh? Who is it? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. So I think it's this it's this idea that you stated at the beginning that teamwork is not a is not a condition that is either on or off, that it's dynamic, which makes these layered champions like as an ongoing institution, I would say, because in the beginning I thought it's probably just to jumpstart things. But like that very, because like to me, my clients, there was like, oh, we don't have self-management, but it's actually evolving. Yes. Right. So um, it's like, if you think of this, that's why you could tend to refer to as health as opposed to maturity health. We could get sick. We could get injured. Something could happen to us. Our health is off. Then we have to go into recovery mode. So health is variable over our lifetimes. The maturity of a team, it may be mature, but things are thrashing around it, forcing it into unhealthy states. So it is not guaranteed when it's up, whether it's self-management or health in general, it needs to be stewarded. Right, so it would be a fallacy to assume because it worked before, you can just take it for granted, which is probably- That's right. We got it up, walk away, perfect. So again, I believe, I believe that was five. I may have miscounted, but I wanna make sure that, so, Thank you everybody for having me talk today. Thank you, Jamie, for having me in. Send any questions again. Thank you. You've got my email address, you've got LinkedIn, whatever, reach out. I'll get the deck out to you guys. Keep the conversations going. And again, keep again, keep building those champions, whether they're in layers or not. It's pretty crucial to have partners to give you success. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks, Thank you everyone. so much. Thanks, Thanks for Charlie. coming, everyone. Really appreciate it. Um You'll, you'll find the links in the chat. I will try to get the video out in the next day or two. Um, and remember, well part, part two, we're going to go very specifically on how to use a particular worksheet to see and solve problems related to layer champions. Yeah. I often like to think of it as like circles and soup, right? You have you know <laughs> things that were within your circle of influence, but how do we solve for problems that are outside of our outside of our circle of influence, right? And so it's sort of a safety net. Now we have this place we can go and we can say, oh, this is something that this team, the team is really challenged by this. They can't solve for it on their own. Let's take it to the layered champion meeting. And we know we have right. that in place. And so we know we have a, a path forward. And then we're not wondering about, well, who do we need to escalate to? But we start with that layered champion meeting. We know, okay, I'm gonna take this to the layered champion meeting and discuss it. And then we have, we have support now, right? That wasn't there before. And because those people are now more plugged into the team. So it's building a partnership with the with the people who are in that layered champion uh, group. And if, and if there's any, if you're familiar at all with Scrum at Scale, there's something referred to as an executive action team. That would just be the outer bounds of one of these layers. So it, it's a natural fit into some of the scaling frameworks. It's a natural addition to Scrum. It's a change. I call it a change of behavior. Yes, it has meetings, but there's it really is an enabling and championing and trading more people with agile minded in and around the teams. So thank you. We'll see you see you at the next session. Great. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you. Everybody have a good weekend. Take care. Thank yeah, thanks for coming. Bye, everyone. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone.